Good evening and welcome to the campus of Maranatha Baptist University. We're so glad you could join us tonight for this final performance of Shakespeare's Much Ado About Nothing. The cast and the crew have been working hard for actually many months now and they're really pleased to be able to put this on one final time for you tonight. I have a few housekeeping things to share with you as we start tonight. There is an intermission. It's 10 minutes between Act 1 and Act 2. If you have a cell phone, please silence that so as not to distract anyone here. And if, uh, if there's any noise or commotion, please take that to the lobby in the back during the performance. It's our practice to begin um, every meeting or performance uh, with prayer, and we'd like to begin tonight with prayer. Father, we thank you for your great blessings. Thank you for the ability to think and laugh and have fun and enjoy this performance tonight. We pray that you would be with all those involved. We pray that you would be honored and glorified. And we pray this in Christ's name. Amen. I learn in this letter that Don Pedro of Aragon comes this night to Messina. Oh. <laughs> he is very near by this. He was not three leagues off when I left him. Oh. How many gentlemen have you lost in this action? But few of any sort, and none of name. <laughs> oh. Oh, right. A victory is twice itself, and the achiever brings home full numbers. Yeah. I read in here that Don Pedro hath bestowed much honor upon a young Florentine called Claudio. Much Claudio. deserved on his part, and equally remembered by Don Pedro. He hath borne himself beyond the promise of his age doing in the figure of a lamb the feats of a lion. <laughs> he hath an uncle here in Messina that I think will be very much glad to hear of it. I have already delivered him letters, and there appears much joy in him. I pray you, is Signor Mountanto returned from the wars, or no? I know none of that name, lady. There was none in the army of any sort. Who is he that you ask for, niece? My cousin means Senior Benedict of Padua. <laughs> oh, he's returned, and as pleasant as he ever was. I pray you, how many hath he killed in these wars? For indeed, I promise to eat all of his killing. <laughs> Faith, niece, you tax Senior Benedict too much, but he'll return you in kind, I doubted not. He had done good service in these wars, and a good soldier too, lady. And a good soldier too, a lady. But what is he to a lord? <laughs> a lord to a lord, a man to a man, stuffed with all honorable virtues. Oh, it is so indeed. He is no less than a stuffed man, but for the stuffing, well, we are all mortal. <laughs> <laughs> you must not, good ma'am, mistake my niece. There is a kind of merry war betwixt Signor Benedict and she. <laughs> Whenever they meet, there's a skirmish of wit between them. <laughs> uh, alas, in our last conflict, four of his five wits went halting off. <laughs> and now, now is the whole man governed with one. So that if he have wit enough to keep himself warm, let him bear it for a difference between himself and his horse. <laughs> uh, it is all the wealth he hath left in the world to be known a reasonable creature. <laughs> But who is his companion now? He hath every month a new sworn brother. Is it possible? <laughs> Very easily possible. He wears his faith, but is the fashion of his hat. <laughs> it ever changes with the next block. I see, lady, the gentleman is not in your book. <laughs> no. And he wore I would burn my study. <laughs> <laughs> but I pray you, who is his companion? Is there no young squire now that will make a voyage with him to the devil? Well, he is most in the company of the right noble Claudio. Ugh! He will hang on him like a disease. <laughs> he is sooner caught than the pestilence, and the taker runs presently mad. God help the noble Claudio. If he have caught the Benedict, it will cost him a thousand pound ere be cured. <laughs> I will most carefully hold friends with you, lady. Do, good friend. <laughs> you will never run mad, niece. No, not till a hot January. <laughs> Don Pedro is approached. <laughs> 
<laughs> Good singer, Leonardo! <laughs> you are come to meet your trouble. The fashion of the world is to avoid cost, and you encounter it. Never came trouble to my house in the likeness of your grace. <laughs> you embrace your charge too willingly. I believe this is your daughter. Her mother hath many times told me so. <laughs> <laughs> Were you in doubt, sir, that you asked her? No, oh, Signor Benedict, no. <laughs> Truly, the lady favors you so that it, it's like she fathers herself. <laughs> be happy, lady, for you're like an honorable father. Though Signor Leonardo be her father, she would not have his head on her shoulders for all, Messina, <laughs> as like him as she is. I wonder that you will still be talking, Signor Benedict. Nobody marks you. <laughs> My dear Lady Disdain, are you yet living? Is it possible Disdain should die when she hath such meat food to feed it as Signor Benedict? Courtesy itself must convert to disdain if you come in her presence. <laughs> well, then is courtesy a turncoat? But it is certain. I am loved of all women. <laughs> <laughs> Only you accepted. <laughs> and I would, I could find in my heart that I had not a hard heart, for truly I love none. <clears throat> a dear happiness to women. <laughs> oh. <laughs> they would else have been troubled with a pernicious suitor. I thank God in my cold blood I am of your humor for that. I would rather hear my dog bark at a crow than a man <laughs> swear he loves me. God keep your ladyship still in that mind, so some gentleman or other shall scape a predestined scratched face. Huh. <laughs> Scratching could not make it worse, and twere such a face as yours were. Oh. <laughs> well, you are a rare parrot teacher. A bird of my tongue is better than a beast of yours. I would my horse have the speed of your tongue. Well, I would but keep your way. I have done. <laughs> you always end with a jade's trick. I know you of old. Gentlemen, my dear friend Leonardo hath invited you all. I tell him, we shall stay here at least a month. A month? Hey. Let me bid you welcome, my lord. Being reconciled to the prince, your brother, I owe you all manner of duty. <laughs> I thank you. I'm not of many words. But I thank you. Please let your grace lead on. Nay, Leonato, we will go together. Benedict. Didst thou note the daughter of Signor Leonato? I noted her not, but I looked on her. Is she not a modest young lady? <laughs> Do you question me, as an honest man should, for my simple, true judgment? <laughs> or would you have me speak after my custom, as a professed tyrant to their sex? Uh, no, I pray thee, speak in sober judgment. <laughs> Why, a faith methinks she's too low for a high praise, what? too brown for a fair praise, no, wait a minute. and too little for a great praise. <laughs> Only this commendation, I can't afford her. That were she other than as she is, she were unhandsome. <laughs> and being no other but as she is, I do not like her. Thou thinkest I am in sport. <laughs> I pray thee, tell me truly how thou likest her. Why, would you buy her that you inquire after her? Can the world buy such a jewel? Yea, and a case to put it into. <laughs> but speak you this in faith. In my eyes, oh, she's the sweetest lady I've ever looked on. I can see yet without spectacles, and I see no such matter. <laughs> but now take her cousin. Oh, and was she not possessed with a fury, exceeds her in much in beauty, as the first of May doth the last of December. <laughs> but, Claudio, I, I hope you have no intention to turn Husband, have you? I would scarce trust myself, though I had sworn the contrary. If Hero would be my wife! <laughs> have not the world one man, but he wear his cap with suspicion? <laughs> Shall I never see a bachelor of threescore again? Go to a faith. If thou wilt need thrust thy I neck just... into the yoke, wear the permanent and sigh away. <laughs> <laughs> 
Don Pedro has returned to seek you. What secret hath held you here that you follow not to Leonardo's? I would, your grace, constrain me to tell. I, I charge thee on thy allegiance. <laughs> well, then mark you this, on my allegiance. He is in love <laughs> with who that is your grace's part. Mark how short his answer is. <laughs> with I hero. Mm -hmm. Leonardo's short daughter. <laughs> is this so? Yes, my lord. Amen if you love her, for the lady is very well worthy. You speak this to fetch me in, my lord. By my troth, I speak my thoughts. And in faith, lord, I spoke mine. And by my two faiths and trust, my lord, I spoke mine. <sighs> that I love her, I feel. That she is worthy, I know. <laughs> That I neither feel how she should be loved, nor know how she should be worthy, is an opinion that fire cannot melt out of me. I will die in it at the stake. Thou wast ever an obstinate heretic in the despite of beauty. <laughs> and never could maintain his part but in the force of his will. <laughs> that a woman conceived me, I thank her. <laughs> that she brought me up, I likewise give her most humble thanks. But that I will not place my heart as the archer's mark, all women shall pardon me. I will live a bachelor. <laughs> I shall see thee ere I die look pale with love. With anger, with sickness, or with hunger, my lord, but not with love. Well, as time shall try, in time, the savage bull doth bear the yoke. The savage bull may, but if ever the sensible Benedict bear it, let him pluck off the bull's horns and place them on my forehead. And let them be vilely painted. And in such great letters as they write, here is good horse to hire. Let them signify under my name. Here is Benedict. The married man! <laughs> <laughs> well, if Cupid hath not spent all his quiver in Venice, you will quake for this <laughs> shortly. Then I will look for an earthquake, too. <laughs> well, in the meantime, repair to Leonardo's, commend me to him, and tell him I will not fa fail him at supper, for indeed he hath made a great preparation. <laughs> I have almost enough matter in me for such a mission, and so I leave you. My liege, your highness may now do me good. My love is thine to teach any hard lesson that might do thee good. Hath Leonardo a son, my lord? No. No other child but Hero. She is his only heir. Doth thou affect her, Claudio? My lord, when we left on this now ended action, I looked at her with a soldier's eye that liked, but had a rougher task at hand than to drive liking to the name of love. But now that I am returned, and more thoughts have left their places vacant, in their rooms come thronging soft and delicate desires, all prompting me how fair young Hero is. If you love fair Hero, cherish it, and I will break with her and with her father, and thou shalt have her. How quickly thou dost minister to love. But lest my liking might seem too sudden, I would have drawn it with a longer treatise. <laughs> Why need the bridge be much broader than the flood? I know we shall have reveling tonight, I will assume thy part in, in some disguise and tell fair hero I am Claudio. But, then, in her bosom, I'll unclasp my heart and take her hearing prisoner with the force and strong encounter of my amorous tale. Then after, to her father will I break, and the conclusion is, she shall be thine. Come, in practice, let us put it presently. <laughs> What the good year, my lord? Why art thou thus out of measure sad? There is no measure in the occasion that breeds. Therefore the sadness is without limit. You should hear reason. And when I have heard it, what blessing brings it? If not a present remedy, at least a patient sufferance. 
I cannot hide what I am. I must be sad when I have cause to, and smile at no man's jests. Eat when I am hungry, and wait for no man's leisure. Laugh when I am merry, and claw no man in his humor. Yea, but you must not make the full show of this till you may do it without danger. You have as of late stood out against your brother, and he hath newly taken you into his grace, whereby it be impossible to take root but by the fair weather that you make yourself. I had rather be a canker in a hedge than a rose in his grace, and it better befits my blood to be disdained of all than to fashion a carriage to rob love from any. Although it cannot be said that I am a flattering, honest man, it must not be denied that I am a plain-dealing villain. If I had my mouth, I would bite. If I had my liberty, I would do my liking. In the meantime, let me be that I am, and seek not to alter me. Can you make no use of your discontent? I make all use of it, for I use it only. <laughs> Who comes here? What news, Baraccio? The prince, your brother, is royally entertained by Leonato, and I can give you intelligence of an intended marriage. Will it serve for any model to build mischief upon? Who is he who betroths himself to unquietness? Mary, it is your brother's right hand. Who? The most exquisite Claudio. Even he. And who? Who? Which way looks he? Mary on hero, the daughter and heir of Leonato. A very forward march chick. How came you by this? Being entertained close at hand, comes me the prince and Claudio, hand in hand in sad conference. I whipped me behind a tapestry, and there heard it agreed upon that the prince should woo Hero for himself, and having obtained her, give her to the Count Claudio. <laughs> come, come. This may yet prove food for my displeasure, that young startup with all the glory of my overthrow. And if I can cross him anyway... I shall bless myself every way. You two are both sure and will assist me. To the death, my lord. <laughs> Come, let us to the great banquet. Would the cook were of my mind. <laughs> let us go prove what is to be done. We'll wait upon your lordship. <laughs> Was not Don John here at supper? I saw him not. Ugh, how tartly that gentleman looks. I never can see him, but am heartburned an hour <laughs> after. He is of a very melancholy disposition. <laughs> he were an excellent man that were made just in the midway between him and Benedict. The one is too like an image and says nothing, and the other too like my lady's eldest son, ever more tattling. <laughs> then half Signor Benedict's tongue and Don John's head, and half Don John's melancholy <laughs> and Signor Benedict's face. <laughs> With a good leg and a good foot, Uncle, and money enough in his purse, such a man would win any woman in the world. <laughs> oh, by my troth, niece, thou wilt never get thee a husband if thou be so shrewd of thy tongue. In faith, she's too cursed. And so, by being too cursed, God will send you no husband. Just if he send me no husband. For the which blessing I am at him upon my knees every morning and evening. <laughs> Fie, I could not endure a husband with a beard on his face. I would rather lie in the woolen. You may lighten a husband that hath no beard. What should I do with him? Dress him in my apparel and make him my waiting gentlewoman? <laughs> he that hath a beard is more than a youth, and he that hath no beard is less than a man. And he that is more than a youth is not for me. <laughs> and he that is less than a man... I am not for him. <laughs> well, niece, I trust that you will be ruled by your father. Yes, Faith, it is my cousin's duty to make curtsy and say, oh, Father, as it please you. But yet, for all that, cousin, let him be a handsome fellow, or else make another curtsy and say, Father, as it please me. <laughs> <laughs> well, niece, I hope to see you one day fitted with a husband. <laughs> not till God make men of some other metal than earth. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> Would it not grieve a woman to be overmastered with a piece of valiant dust? <laughs> to make an account of her life to a clod of wayward soil? <laughs> no, uncle, I'll none. <laughs> Daughter, remember what I told you. If the prince do solicit you in that kind, you know your answer. <laughs> Let the fault be in the music, cousin. If you be not wooed in good time, or if the prince be too important, tell him there is measure in everything, and so dance away. <laughs> oh, cousin, you apprehend the matter very shrewdly. I have a good eye, uncle. I can see a church by daylight. Indeed, indeed. Then I am yours for the walk, oh. and especially when I walk away. <laughs> With me in your company. I may say so, when I please. And when please you to say so? When I like your favor. Well then, speak low if you speak love. <laughs> well, I would you did like me. So would not I, for your own sake, for I have many ill qualities. Oh, which is one. I say my prayers aloud. <laughs> I love you the better. The hearers may cry, Amen. Oh, God, match me with a good dancer. Amen. And God, keep him out of my sight when the dance is done. <laughs> oh, I know you well enough. You are Signor Leonato. At a word, I am not. <laughs> I know you by the waggling of your head. To tell you the truth, I counterfeit him. Oh, indeed. You could never do him so <laughs> ill well unless you were the very man. You are he. At a word, I am not. <laughs> Come, come, sir. Do you think I do not know you by your excellent wit? Can virtue hide itself? Ha, ah, go to, sir, you are he. Graces will appear and there's an end. <laughs> will you not tell me who told you so? No, you shall pardon me. Uh, nor will you not tell me, nor will you not tell me who you are? Not now. But I was disdainful that I had my good wit out of the hundred merry tales. Well, this was Signor Benedict that said so. <gasps> what is he? Uh, I'm sure you know him well enough. Not I, believe me. Did he never make you laugh? I pray you, what is he? Why, he's the prince's jester. A very dull fool. Only his gift is in devising impossible slanders. <laughs> None but libertines delight in him. And the commendation is not in his wit, <laughs> but in his villainy. For he both pleases men and angers them, and then they laugh at him and beat him. When I know the gentleman, I'll tell him what you say. Oh. Do, do. He'll but break a comparison or two on me, which peradventure not marked or not laughed at strikes him into melancholy. <laughs> and then there's a partridge wing saved, for the fool will eat no supper that night. <laughs> Madame, I believe you oh, may have we must him. follow the leaders. My brother is enamored on Hero, and hath withdrawn with her father to break with him about it. The ladies follow, and yet one visor remains. And that is Claudio. I know him by his bearing. Are you not Signor Benedict? 
<coughs> you know me well. I am he. <laughs> Senor, you are very near to my brother in his love. He is an Amadon hero. I pray you, dissuade him from her, for she is no equal to his birth, and you may do the part of an honest man by it. <clears throat> How know you he loves her? <laughs> I heard him swear by his affection. So did I too. And he swore he would marry her tonight. <laughs> Come, let us to the banquet. <laughs> Thus I answer in the name of Benedict. But hear these ill news with the ears of Claudio. Tis certain so, the prince woos for himself. Friendship is constant in all other things, save in the office and affairs of love. For beauty is a witch, against whose charms melt the faith in the blood. Count Claudio. Yea, the same. Oh, come, will you go with me? Whither? Even to the next willow. About your own business, Count. Come, be of good cheer, for the prince hath got your hero. <laughs> I wish him joy of her. <laughs> what? Think you the prince would serve you thus? I pray you leave me. Oh, now you strike like the blind man. If it will not be, I will leave you. Alas, poor hurt fowl. Now will he creep into the hedges. But that my lady Beatrice should know me and not know me. <laughs> the prince's fool. Oh. It may be I go into that title. Because I am merry, <laughs> but so am I apt to do myself wrong. I am not so reputed. It is the base, though bitter disposition of Beatrice that puts the world into her person and so gives me out. I'll be revenged as I may. <laughs> ah, good, Signor. Where's the Count? Did you see him? Troth, my lord, I found him here as. Melancholy as a lodge in a warren. I told him, and I think I told him true, that your grace had got the good will of this young lady. Why then? What's his melancholy? The thoughts of a schoolboy, who with being overjoyed with finding a bird's nest, shows it to his friend, and then believes he steals it. <laughs> <laughs> Doth he believe so? Aye, the rod he might have bestowed upon you. <laughs> Which, as I take it, have stolen his bird's nest. In faith, I have not. Thank you. I will teach him to trust and restore the nest to the owner. By my faith, I believe you say honestly. <clears throat> the lady Beatrice had a quarrel to you. The gentleman that danced with her told her she is much wronged by you. She misused me past the <laughs> endurance of a block. She told me, not thinking I had been myself, that I was the prince's jester, <laughs> that I was duller than a great thaw. Huddling jest upon jest with such a simple conveyance that I stood like a man at a mark with the whole army shooting at me. <laughs> oh, she speaks poignards and every word stabs. <laughs> if her breath were as terrible as her jest, there'd be none living near her. <laughs> she would infect to the North Star. <laughs> I would not marry her, even if she'd been endowed with all that Adam had left him before he transgressed. <laughs> but come talk not of her, so indeed all horror, disquiet, and perturbation follows her. Oh, look! Here she comes! <laughs> will your grace command me any service? I will go now on the slightest errand to the antipodes you can devise to send me on. I will fit you a toothpicker from the furthest inch of Asia. I will fit you a hair off Kublai Khan's beard. Do you any embassage to the pygmies rather than hold three words conference with that harpy? Sir, you have no employment for me. None. <laughs> but to desire your good company. Oh, good sir, here's a dish I love not. I cannot endure my lady tongue. 
Um, come, lady, come. You have lost the heart of Signor Benedict. Indeed, my lord. He lent it me a while, and I gave him use for it, a double heart for his single one. Mary, once before, he won it of me with false dice, so your grace may well say I have lost it. But you have put him down. You have put him down. So I would not he should do me, my lord. I have brought Count Claudio, whom you sent me to see. <laughs> ah, how now, Count? Why art thou sad? <laughs> not sad, my lord. How then? Sick? Neither, my lord. <laughs> the Count is neither sad, nor sick, nor merry, nor well, but civil, Count. Civil <laughs> as an orange, and something of that jealous complexion. <laughs> The faith, lady, I think you're blazing to be true, though I'll be sworn, if he be so, his conceit is false. Here, Claudio, I have wooed in thy name, and fair hero is one. I have broken with her father, and his goodwill obtained. Name the day of marriage, and God give thee joy. Count, take of me my daughter, and with her my fortunes. His grace hath made the match, and may grace say amen to it. <laughs> Speak, Count, tis your cue. <laughs> uh, silence is the perfectest herald of joy. I were but little happy if I could say how much. Lady, as you are mine, I am yours. I give myself away to you and dote upon the exchange. <laughs> speak, cousin, or if you cannot, stop his mouth with a kiss and let not him speak neither. <laughs> In faith, lady, you have a merry heart. Yea, my lord, I thank it. Poor fool, it keeps on the windy side of care. <laughs> my cousin tells him in his ear that he is in her heart. And so she doth, cousin. <laughs> and thus goes everyone to the world but I. <laughs> and I am sunburnt. I may sit in the corner and cry hey-ho for a husband. <laughs> lady Beatrice, I will get you one. I would rather have one of your father's getting. <laughs> Hath your grace ne'er a brother like you? Your father got excellent husbands if a maid could come by them. Would you have me, lady? No, my lord. <laughs> In, unless I might have another for working days. Your grace is too costly to wear every day. <laughs> but I beseech your grace, pardon me. I was born to speak all mirth and no matter. Your silence most offends, and to be merry best becomes you, for out of the question, you were born in a merry hour. No, sure, my lord, my mother cried, but then there was a star danced, and under that I was born. <laughs> <laughs> Cousins, God give you joy. Oh, by my troth, a pleasant spirited lady. There's little of the melancholy element in her, my lord. She is never sad but when she sleeps, and not ever sad then. For my daughter Hero hath told me that Beatrice hath oft dreamed of unhappiness and waked herself with laughing. <laughs> <laughs> ah, but she cannot endure to hear tell of a husband. By no means. She mocks no. all her wooers out of suit. She were an excellent wife for Benedict. <laughs> my lord, no, if they were but a week married, they would talk themselves mad. <laughs> Count Claudio, when mean you to go to church? Tomorrow, my lord. <laughs> Time goes on crutches till love have all his rights. Not till Monday, my dear son, which is just oh. two nights hence, and a time too brief, too, to have all things answer in my mind. <laughs> Come, you shake the head at so long a breathing. But I'll warn thee, Claudio, the time shall not go idly by us. I will, in the interim, undertake one of Hercules' labors, that is, to bring the Lady Beatrice and Signor Benedict into a mountain of affections, <laughs> the one with the other. Be joking. I will fain have it a match, and I doubt not but to fashion it, if you three will but render such assistance as I will give you direction. <laughs> my lord, I am for you, though it cost me ten nights' watchings. <laughs> and I, my lord. And you, gentle hero? I will do any modest office, my lord, to help my cousin to a good <laughs> husband. And Benedict is not the unhopefulest husband that I know. Thus far I can't praise him. He is of noble strain, yes. approved valor, and confirmed honesty. I will teach you to humor your cousin that she will fall in love with Benedict. And I, with your two helps, will so practice on Benedict that he, in spite of his quick wit and queasy stomach, <laughs> shall fall in love with Beatrice. 
we can do this. Cupid is no longer an archer. His glory <laughs> shall be ours, for we are the only love gods. <laughs> Go in with me, and I will tell you my drift. <laughs> How shall we do this thing, my lord? Fine, I'll go. It is true that Count Claudio shall marry the daughter of Leonardo. Yea, my lord, but I can cross it. Any bar, any cross, any impediment will prove medicinal to me, for I am in sick displeasure to him. And whatsoever comes athwart his affection ranges evenly with mine. How canst thou cross this marriage? Not honestly, my lord, but so covertly that no dishonesty shall appear in me. Show me briefly how. I believe I told your lordship a year since how much I am in the favor of Margaret, the waiting gentlewoman to Hero. I remember. I can at any unseasonable instant of the night appoint her to look out at her mistress's chamber window. What life is in that to be the death of this marriage? The poison of that lies in you to temper. Go you to the prince your brother, to tell him that he hath wronged his honor in matching the renowned Claudio to a contaminated stale, such a one as hero. What proof shall I make of that? Go find me a meet hour to draw the prince and Claudio alone. Tell them that you know hero loves me. They shall scarcely believe this without trial. Offer them instances which shall bear no less likelihood than to See me at her chamber window, hear me call Margaret Hero, and bring them to see this the very night before the intended wedding. The end shall be thus. There shall appear such seeming truth of Hero's disloyalty, that jealousy shall be called assurance, and all the preparations overthrown. <laughs> Grow this to what adverse issue it can. I will put it in practice. Be you cunning in the working of this, and thy fee shall be a thousand ducats. Be you constant in the accusation, and my cunning shall not fail me. <laughs> I will presently go learn the day of their marriage. <laughs> <laughs> Do much wonder that one man, seeing how much another man is a fool when he dedicates himself to the behaviors of love, will, after having laughed at such shallow follies in others, become the argument of his own scorn by falling in love. <laughs> and such a man is Claudio. I have known him when there was no music in him but the drum and the fife. And now, Will you rather hear the tabor and the pipe? <laughs> I have known him when he would have walked ten mile afoot to see a good armor. And now will he lie ten nights awake, carving the fashion of a new doublet. <laughs> he was wont to speak plain and with purpose, as an honest man and a, and a soldier. And now, now as he turned orthography, his words are a very fantastical banquet, just so many strange dishes. <laughs> May I be so converted to see with these eyes? I cannot tell, I, I think not. I will not be sworn, but love may transform me to an oyster. <laughs> but I will take my oath on it. Till love hath made an oyster of me, he will never make me such a fool. <laughs> One woman is fair. 
yet I am well. <laughs> Another is wise, yet I am well. Another is virtuous, yet I am well. But till all graces be in one woman, one woman shall not come in my grace. <laughs> oh, rich she shall be, that's certain. <laughs> wise, or I'll none. Virtuous, or I'll never mark her. Fair, or I'll never look on her. <laughs> Mild, or come not near me. <laughs> of good discourse, an excellent musician, and her hair, here we go. Her hair of what color it please God. <laughs> 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 the prince and Monsieur Love. <laughs> I will hide me. Oh, yes. Come. Shall we not hear this excellent music? See where Abendic have hid himself? Oh, very well, my lord. <laughs> oh, good, my lord. Tax not so bad a voice to slander music any more than once. I pray thee, sing, and let me woo no more. <laughs> now, divine heir, now is the soul ravished. Is not it strange that sheep's guts hail souls out of men's bodies? Sigh no more, ladies, sigh no more. Men were deceivers ever. One foot in sea and one on shore to one thing constant never. <laughs> then sigh not so, but let them go and be you blithe and bonny, converting all your sounds of woe into hate. Song. And an ill singer, my lord. <laughs> no, no, Faith, thou singest well enough. <laughs> and she had been a dog that would have howled thus. They would have hanged her. Mary, Mary, doth thou hear about the czar? I pray thee, get us some excellent music, for we would have it tomorrow night at Lady Hero's chamber window. The best I, I can, my lord. Do so. Farewell. Come hither, Signor Leonato. What was it you told me of today? That your niece, Beatrice, was in love with Signor Benedict? <laughs> oh, I, I did never think that lady would love any other man. No, nor I neither, but most wonderful that she should so dote on Signor Benedict whom she hath in all outward behavior seemed to ever to abhor. Is it possible? Sits the wind in that corner. I cannot tell what to think of it, my lord, but that she loves him with an enraged affection. <laughs> Maybe she does but, but counterfeit. Faith like enough. My soul, counterfeit. There was never counterfeit of passion came so near the life of passion as she discovers it. Why? What effects of passion shows she? Bait the hook well. This fish will bite. <laughs> <laughs> what effects, my lord? You heard my daughter tell you how. <laughs> how? How? Pray thee. <gasps> oh! You amaze me! I would have, I thought, her spirits had been, been invincible against all such assaults of affection. I would have sworn it had, my lord, especially against Signor Benedict. I should think this is a trick. 
but that the white-bearded fellow speaks it. I don't know. Has she made her affections known to Benedict? No, and swears she never will. That's her torment. This, she says, she'll be up 20 times a night, and there she will sit in her smock till she have writ a piece of paper. My daughter tells us all. Now you talk of a sheet of paper. Unfold the tail. No. She tore the paper into a thousand pieces, railed at herself that she would be so immodest to love someone she knew would mock her. Uh, then down upon her knees she falls, weeps, sobs, beats her heart, tears her hair, <laughs> prays, curses. Oh, sweet Benedict! God give me patience! She, she doth indeed, my daughter says so. And the ecstasy has so much overborne Beatrice that sometimes my daughter Hero is afeard that Beatrice will do a desperate outrage to herself. It were better that she, he learned of it from some other if she will not discover it. To what end? He would but torment the poor lady for the worse. And he should? for a reason to hang him. For she is an excellent, sweet lady. And above all suspicions, she is virtuous. Yes, absolutely. And she is exceedingly wise. Here, here. <laughs> in everything but in loving Benedict. <laughs> <laughs> I pray thee, tell her of it and hear what he will say. Were it good, think you? Well, Hero thinks she will surely die. For she says she will die mm. if he love her not. And she says she will die ere she make her love known. And she will die if he woo her. <laughs> she doth well. If she should make tender of her love, it is very probable he'll scorn it. For the gentleman, as you know all, hath a contemptible spirit. Mm hmm <laughs> Well, I am sorry for thy niece. I love Benedict well, and I could wish that he'd modestly examine himself to see how unworthy he is of so good a lady. My lord, will you walk? Dinner is ready. If he do not dote on her upon this, I will never trust my expectation. <laughs> now, let the same trap be spread for her, and that <laughs> must your daughter and gentlewoman carry. Let us have her call him for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> this, this can be no trick. The conference was sadly born. They have the truth of this from Hero. Oh, they seem to, to pity the lady. Love me? Why? <laughs> no matter, it must be requited. Oh, I hear how I am censured. They say, I will bear myself proudly if I perceive the love come from her. Oh, they say also, she would rather die than show any sign of affection. I did never think to marry. <laughs> I must not seem proud. Happier they that can hear the detractions and put them to mending. <laughs> oh, they say the lady is fair. Tis so. <laughs> I can bear them witness, and virtuous, tis a truth, <sighs> and wise, <laughs> but for loving me. <laughs> By my troth, it is no great addition to her wit, nor no great argument for her folly, <laughs> for I will be horribly in love with her. <laughs> oh. I may to have some odd remnants of wit broken on me, for I have railed so long against marriage. But doth not the appetite alter? <laughs> A man loves the meat in his youth, which he cannot endure in his age. Shall these quips and sentences and paper bullets of the brain awe ah, a man against the career of his humor? No, the world must be peopled. <sighs> now, when I said I would die a bachelor, 
I did never think I would live till I were married. Oh, here comes Beatrice. By this day, she is a fair lady. <laughs> I do spy some marks of love in her. Against my will, I am sent to bid you come into <clears throat> dinner. Fair Beatrice, I thank you for your pains. I took no more pains for those thanks than you take pains to thank me. If it had been painful, I would not have come. <laughs> so you take pleasure then in the message? Yea, just as much as you may take upon a knife's point and choke withal. <laughs> you have no stomach, senor? Farewell. Against my will, I am sent to bid you into dinner. There's a double meaning in that. <laughs> Margaret, run thee to the parlor. There shalt thou find my cousin Beatrice discoursing with the prince and Claudio. <laughs> Whisper in her ear and tell her, I and Ursula walk in the courtyard, and her whole discourse is all of her. Say that thou overheardst us, and bid her steal into the arches to overhear us. This is thy office. Bear thee well in it, and leave us alone. <laughs> oh, I'll make her come, I warrant you, presently. <laughs> now, Ursula, when Beatrice doth come, as we do trace this alley up and down, our talk must only be of Benedict. When I do name him, <laughs> let it be thy part to praise him more than ever man did merit. My talk to thee must be how Benedict is sick in love with Beatrice. Of this matter is little Cupid's crafty arrow made that only wounds by hearsay. <laughs> <laughs> and now begin, for look where Beatrice, like a little bird, flies close to the ground to hear our conference. <laughs> no, truly, Ursula, she is too disdainful. I know her spirits are coy and wild. But are you sure that Benedict loves Beatrice so entirely? Well, so says the prince and my new troth lord. And did they bid you tell her of it? Well, they did entreat me to acquaint her of it, but I persuaded them, if they truly loved Benedict, to wish him wrestle with affection <laughs> and never to let Beatrice know of it. But why did you so? Doth not the gentleman deserve as full, as fortunate a wife as ever Beatrice could furnish? Oh, I know he doth deserve as, mu as much as may be yielded to a man, but nature never framed a woman's heart of prouder stuff than that of Beatrice. Disdain and scorn ride sparkling in her eyes, and her wit values itself so highly that to her all matter else seems weak. She cannot love, <laughs> nor take no shape, nor project of affection. Sure, I think so. And therefore, certainly, it were not good she knew his love, lest she make sport at it. Why, you speak truth. I never yet saw man. How wise, how noble, how young, rarely featured. But she would spell him backward. <sighs> If fair-faced, she would swear the gentleman should be her sister. <sighs> and if well-spoken, why, weather vane blown with all winds, so turns she every man the wrong side out. <laughs> but who dare tell her so? If I should speak, she would mock me into air. Oh, she would laugh me out of myself and press me to death with wit. Oh, yes, therefore, let Benedict, like covered fire, consume away in sighs and waste inwardly. <laughs> Yet tell her of it, hear what she will say. No, rather I will go to Benedict and counsel him to fight against his passion. 
Oh, do not do your cousin such a wrong. Oh. She cannot be so much without true judgment. Having so swift and excellent a wit as she is prized to have, so as to refuse so rare a gentleman as Signor Benedict. Mm, indeed, he is the only man of Italy, mm. always excepted my dear Claudio. Ah, <laughs> uh, Signor Benedict, for shape, for bearing, mm. argument and valor goes foremost in report throughout Italy. <sighs> <laughs> Indeed, he hath an excellent good name, and his excellence did earn it ere he had it. <laughs> uh, when are you to be married, madam? Why, every day, <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> Come, go in, I'll show thee some attires and have thy counsel which is best to furnish me tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> She's limed, I'll warrant you. We have caught her. <laughs> if it proves so, then loving goes by haps. Some Cupid kills with arrows, some with traps. <laughs> okay, I can't. <laughs> oh. What fire is in mine ears? Can this be true? Stand I condemned for pride and scorn so much? <sighs> Contempt, farewell. And maiden pride, adieu. No glory lives behind the back of such. <sighs> and Benedict. <laughs> Love on, I will requite thee, taming my wild heart to thy loving hand. If thou dost love, my kindness shall incite thee to bind our loves up in a holy band. For others say thou dost deserve. And I believe it. <laughs> Gallants, I am not as I have been. So say I. <laughs> Methinks you are. <laughs> Methinks you are sadder. <laughs> I hope he be in love. Oh, there's no true drop of blood in him to be truly touched with love. If he be sad, he wants money. <laughs> Everyone can master grief. But he that has it, if he be not in love with some woman, there's no believing the old signs. Brushing his hat of mornings, what should that bode? <laughs> Yea, and rubs himself with civet. Ah, <sighs> can't you not smell him out by it? Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> That's as much as to say, the sweet use in love. The greatest note of it is his melancholy. <laughs> And when was he wont to wash his face? <gasps> Indeed! That tells a heavy tale of him. Conclude, conclude. He is in love. Nay, but I would know who loves him. <laughs> that would I know too. I warrant one that knows him not. <laughs> yes, and his ill conditions, and despite of all, dies for him. <laughs> <laughs> Poor girl, she shall be buried with her face upwards. <laughs> Fellows, such as you are no charm for melancholy. <laughs> oh, oh, come, old senor, walk aside with me. I have studied eight or nine wise words which wise these hobby horses words. must not hear. <laughs> <laughs> for my life, to break with him about Beatrice. Tis even so. Hero and Margaret have by this played their parts with Beatrice. <laughs> and then the two bears won't bite one another when they meet. <laughs> My lord and brother, God save you. <clears throat> good, good in, brother. 
If your leisure served, I would speak with you. In private? If it please you, yet Count Claudio may hear, for what I would speak of concerns him. What's the matter? Means your lordship to be married tomorrow. Well, you know he does. <laughs> I know not that, when he knows what I know. If there be any impediment, I pray you discover it. You may think I love you not, but let it appear hereafter, and aim better at me by that now I will manifest. For my brother, I believe he holds you well, and in dearness of heart hath sought to effect your ensuing marriage. Yet, surely, suit ill spent and labor ill bestowed. Why? What's the matter? I came hither to tell you, and circumstances shortened, for she has been too long a talking of. The lady is disloyal. Ooh, hero? Even she, Leonardo's hero, your hero, every man's hero. Disloyal? The word is too good to paint out her wickedness. I could say she were worse. Think you of a worse title, and I will fit it to her. But, but wander not till further warrant. Go but with me tonight, and you shall see her chamber windows entered, even no. the night before her wedding day. No. And if you love her still, tomorrow wed her. But it would better befit thy honor to change your mind. May this be so? I will not think it. If you dare not trust that you see, confess not that you know. If you will follow me, I will show you enough. And when you have heard more and seen more, proceed accordingly. If I see anything tonight, why well, should not marry her? Tomorrow in the congregation where I should wed her, there I will shame her before the face of all. And as I would for thee to obtain her, I will join with thee to disgrace her. I will disparage her no further till you are my witnesses. Bear it but coldly till midnight, and let the issue show itself. Are you good men and true? Yea, or else it were pity they should suffer salvation, body and soul. Nay, that were a punishment too good for them, if they should have any allegiance in them, being chosen for the prince's watch. Well, give them their charge, neighbor Dogberry. First, who think you is the most desertless man to be constable? Uh, Hugh Oakcake, ma'am. Or George Seacole, <laughs> for they can write and read. Well, come hither, neighbor Seacole. God hath blessed you with a good name. To be a well-favored man is the gift of fortune, <laughs> but to write and read comes by nature. Both which, Master Constable? You have. Oh. I knew it would be your answer. Well, for your favor, sir, you are thought here to be the most senseless and fit man for the constable of the watch. Therefore, bear you the lantern. Well, this is your charge. You shall comprehend all vagrant men and bid them stand in the prince's name. How if he will not stand? Uh, why? Then you may take no note of them, but let them go. <laughs> and presently call the rest of the watch together and thank God you are rid of a knave. If he will not stand when he is bidden, he is none of the prince's subjects. True, and you are to meddle with none but the prince's subjects. You shall also make no noise in the streets, for the watch to babble and to talk is most tolerable, 
and not to be endured. We will rather sleep than talk. We know what belongs to a watch. Why? You speak like an ancient and most quiet watch. Mm -hmm. For I cannot see how sleeping should offend. Only have a care that your bills be not stolen. Mm -hmm. Well, you are to call at all the alehouses and bid those that are drunk get them to bed. Mm -hmm. How if they will not? Huh. Um. Mm -hmm. well, well, then you may let them alone till they are sober. Mm -hmm. And if they make you not then the better answer, you may say they are not the men you took them for. Mm. Mm. Well, ma'am. <laughs> and if you do take a thief, <laughs> you may <laughs> suspect him by virtue of your office to be no true man. For such kind of men, the less you meddle or make with them, why the more is for your honesty. If we know him to be a thief, shall we not lay hands on him? Truly, by your office you may. But I think they that touch pitch will be defiled. The most peaceable way for you, if you do take a thief, is to let him sow himself what he is and steal out of your company. You have always been called a merciful woman partner. <laughs> Truly, oh. I would not hang oh. a dog by my will. No. Much more a man who has any honesty in him. Well, neighbors, this is your charge. And there be any matters of weight chances, you shall call up me. Call up. Good night. Mm -hmm. Come, neighbor. <sighs> well, masters, we hear our charge. Let us go sit upon the church bench till two, and then all to bed. <laughs> One word more, honest neighbors. I pray you watch about Signor Leonato's door, for the wedding being tomorrow, there is great coil tonight. Adieu. Be vigilant, I beseech you. What? Mm -hmm. Conrad, peace, stir not. Conrad, I say. Here, man, I'm at thy elbow. Mass, and my elbow itched. I thought there should a scab follow. I will owe thee an answer for that. And now, forward with thy tail. Stand thee close, then, and I will, like a true drunkard, utter all to thee. <laughs> Some treason, masters, yet stand close. Therefore, know I have earned of Don John a thousand ducats. <laughs> Is it possible that any villainy should be so dear? Thou shouldst rather ask if it were possible any villainy should <coughs> be so rich. I want... <laughs> Didst thou not hear somebody? No, t'was the, the, the vein on the house. Very well. <sighs> Know that I have tonight wooed Margaret, the waiting gentlewoman to Hero, by the name of Hero. She leans me out at her mistress's chamber window, bids me a thousand times good night. <laughs> oh, I tell this tale vilely. I should first tell thee how the prince, Claudio, and my master, planted and placed and possessed by my master, Don John, saw far off from the orchard this amiable encounter. <laughs> and thought they Margaret was hero? Two of them did, the prince and Claudio, but the devil my master no. knew she was Margaret, and partly by his oaths which first possessed them, and partly by the dark night which did deceive them, but chiefly by my villainy <gasps> which confirmed any slander that Don John had made, away went Claudio in rage. <laughs> <laughs> Tis true? Aye. And he swore he would meet her as he was appointed next morning at the temple. 
And there, before the whole congregation, shame her with what he saw or night, and send her home again without a husband. <laughs> you in the prince's name stand. Call up the right, Master Constable. Yeah. We have here recovered the most dangerous piece of lechery that ever was known in the Commonwealth. Then one of them is deformed. I know him by his beard. Masters, you'll be deformed forthwith, and you not by the worse. Masters, please. Never speak. We charge you. Let us obey you to go with us. As you say, come, we'll obey you. sweet hero. Why, how now? Speak you in the sick tune? I am all out of other tunes, methinks. Does the heart of such an one as Beatrice need tuning? Then may we trust no one. Oh, what means the fool by that? <laughs> Nothing, I just that may God send everyone their heart's desire. <laughs> These gloves the Count sent me, they're an excellent perfume. Oh. I am stuffed, cousin, I cannot smell. Oh. Get you some of this Carduus Benedictus and lay it to your heart. It is the only thing to cure such a sickness. Benedictus? Why Benedictus? You have some moral in this Benedictus? No, by my troth. I have no moral meaning. I meant plain holly thistle. You may think, perchance, that I think you are in love. Nay, by Our Lady. I am not such a fool to think that you are in love or that you will be in love or that you can be in love. Yet Benedict was the same as you, and now he has become a man. He swore he would never marry, and yet now, in despite of his heart, he thinks upon it without grudging. And how you may be converted, I know not. But methinks you look with your eyes as other women do. <laughs> Madam, withdraw. The prince, the count, Don John, and all the gallants of the town are come to fetch you to church. Come to dress me, good cuz, good Meg, good Ursula. Come along. What would you with me, honest neighbor Dogberry? Merry sir, I would have some confidence with you that discerns you nearly. Brief, I pray you, for you see it is a busy time with me. Merry this it is, sir. Yes, in truth it is, sir. What is it, my good friends? Good lady Virgin, sir, speak a little off the matter. An old woman, sir, and her wits are not so blunt as I would desire they were, but in faith. Honest as the skin between her brows. Yes, I thank God I'm as honest as any man living. That is an old man, but no honester than I am. Neighbors, you are tedious. It pleases your worship to <sighs> say so. But we are the poor duke's officers. Mm -hmm. If I were as tedious as a king, I could find it in my own heart to bestow it all of your worth it. Mm -hmm. All thy tediousness on me, huh? Yea, and for a thousand pounds more than Tiv. Though I be but a poor woman, I am glad to hear it. And so am I. <clears throat> 
I would fain know what you have to say. Mary, sir, our watch tonight, accepting your worship's presence, has taken a couple errant knaves as any in Messina. <laughs> An old woman, sir, as she will be talking. But <laughs> as they say, when the age is in, the wit is out. <laughs> Indeed, neighbor, she comes too short of you. Gift that God gives. <laughs> I must leave you. One word, sir. Our watch, sir, have indeed comprehended two auspicious persons and would have them this morning examined before your worship. Take their examination yourself and bring it me. I am now in great haste as it may appear unto you. Mary, yes, it is. It would be our good penitence. Drink some wine ere you go. <laughs> Fare you well. Go, good partner, go. Get you to the sexton. Bid her bring her pen and inkhorn to the jail. We are now to examination these men. And we must do it wisely. We will spare for no wit, I warrant you. Get the learned sexton to set down our excommunication. Now be off and meet me at the jail. Come, Friar Francis, be brief, only to the plainest form of marriage, and you shall recount their particular duties afterward. <laughs> <laughs> you come hither, my lord, to marry this lady. No. What? To be married to her, Friar. You come to marry her. <laughs> <laughs> lady, you come hither to be married to this count. I do. If either of you know any inward impediment why you should not be conjoined, I charge you on your souls to utter it. Know you any hero? None, my lord. Know you any, Count? I dare make his answer, none. <laughs> oh, what men dare do, what men may do, what men daily do not knowing what they do. How now? Are we playing with interjections? Speak your mind. Stand thee by, friar. Father, by your leave, will you with free and unconstrained soul give me this maid, your daughter? As freely, son, as God did give her me. And what have I to give you back? whose worth may counterpose this rich and precious gift. Nothing, unless you render it again. Sweet prince, you learn me noble thankfulness. There, Leonardo, <laughs> take her back again. <laughs> Give not this rotten orange to your friend. She is but the sign and semblance of her honor. Behold how like a maid she blushes here. Would you not all swear? All of you that see her that she were made by these exterior shows? Yes. But she is none. Her blush is guiltiness, no. not modesty. No. What do you mean, my lord? Not to be merry, no. not to knit my soul, no. to this approved wanton. No. Oh. Dear my lord, if you and your own proof have caused such an offense with my daughter. I, I, no, Lena, I never tempted her with word too large. But as a brother to his sister showed bashful sincerity and comely love. And, and seemed I ever otherwise to yes. you? Ah! Oh, me. Seeming, I were right against it. You seem to be as Diane in her orbs, as chaste as the bud ere it be blown. But you are more in temper in your blood than Venus. Is my lord well? That he doth speak so wide. <laughs> Sweet prince, why speak not you? Why should I speak? I stand dishonored that I've gone about to link my dear friend to a common stale. <laughs> Are these things spoken or do I but no. dream? Sir, they're spoken and these things are true. This looks not like a nuptial. Let me move but one question to your daughter. And by that fatherly power you have in her, 
bid her answer truly. I charge thee do so, as thou art my child. Oh, oh God, defend me, how I am beset. What kind of catechizing call you this? What man was he talked with you yesternight out at your window betwixt twelve and one? Now if you are a maid, answer truly. I, I talked with no man at that hour, my lord. Why then? Then, then you are no maiden! No. Leonardo, I'm sorry you must hear. On my honor, myself, my brother, and this grieved count did see her, hear her at the hour last night, talk with a ruffian at her chamber window, who hath indeed, most like a liberal villain, confessed their secret encounters. Who dares utter such charges? Fie, fie, my lord, they are not to be spoken, not to be named. Oh. Pretty lady, I am sorry for thy misgovernment. Oh. Oh, hero, what a hero hast thou been, if half thy outward graces had been placed about the thoughts and counsels of thy heart. But fare thee well, most foul, most fair, farewell! Hath no man's dagger here a point for me? Oh, how now, cousin, wherefore sink you down? Come, let us go, these things come to light. Smother her spirits up. Please. How doth the lady? Oh, Dad, I think. Help, help, Uncle. Oh, hero. Uncle, oh. Senior Benedict, oh, Friar, woman, I please speak help. Off. Oh, fate, take not away thy heavy hand. Death is the fairest cover for her shame that can be wished for. Oh, how now, cousin? Have oh. comfort, lady. Dost thou look up? Yea, wherefore should she not? <laughs> wherefore? Why doth not every earthly thing cry shame upon her? Uncle, Could she here deny the story that is imprinted in her blood? Do not live, hero. Uncle, Do not open thy eyes, for if I did not think thou would not quickly die, I myself would strike in thy life. Why she has fallen into a pit of ink that the wide sea yet drops far too few to wash her pure again. Sir, so be patient. For my part, I am so tired in wonder, I know not what to say. Oh, on my soul, my cousin is belied. Lady, were you a bed for the last night? No, truly not, although until last night I have this twelve month been her bedfellow. Confirmed, confirmed, would the two princes lie and Claudio lie, who loved her so that speaking of her foulness washed it with tears. Hence from her, let her die. Hear, hear me a little, for I've only been silent so long and given way into this course of fortune. By noting of this lady, I've marked a thousand blushing apparitions to start into her face, a thousand innocent shames. And in her eyes there hath appeared a fire to burn the airs these princes hold against her maiden truth. Call me a fool, trust not my age, my reverence, calling, nor divinity, if this sweet lady lie not guiltless under some biting error. Lady, what man is he you are accused of? I, they know that to accuse me, I know none. Oh, Father, prove you that any man conversed with me at hours and meet, or, or that I yesternight maintained the change of words with any creature. If so, then refuse me, hate me, torture me to death. There's some strange misprision in the princes. Two of them have the very bent of honor. And if their wisdoms be misled in this, the practice of it lies in Don John, whose spirits toil and frames of villainy. I know not, but if they do wrong her honor, the proudest of them shall well hear of it. Time hath not yet so dried this blood of mine, but they shall find in me strength of limb and power and choice of friends to quit me of them thoroughly. Pause a while. Let my counsel sway you in this case. Your daughter here, the prince is left for dead, let her a while be secretly kept in and publish it that she is dead indeed. Maintain a mourning ostentation, and on your family's old monument, hang a mournful epitaph, and do all rights that appertain unto a burial. What shall become of this? What will this do? Mary, this well-consented shall on her behalf 
changed slander to remorse. She, dying as it must so be maintained, upon the instant she was accused, shall be lamented, pitied, and excused of every hearer. And so will it fare with Claudio. He shall hear she died upon his words. The idea of her life shall sweetly creep into his study of imagination, and when she had lived indeed. And then shall he mourn, in which he had not so accused her. Signor Leonardo, let the friar advise you. And though you know my inwardness in love is very much unto the prince and Claudio, yet by mine honor I will deal in this secretly and justly as you command. Being that, I flow in grief. The smallest child may lead me. Tis well consented. Presently away. Come, lady, die to live. This wedding day perhaps is but prolonged. Have patience and endure. Beatrice, have you wept all this while? Yea, and I, I will weep a while longer. I will not desire that. You have no reason. I do it freely. Surely I do believe your fair cousin is wrong. Oh, how much might the man deserve of me that would write her? Is there any way to show such friendship? A very even way, but no, no such friend. May a man do it? It is a man's office, but not yours. I do love nothing in the world so much as you. Is not that strange? <laughs> as strange as the thing I know not. It were as possible for me to say, I love nothing so well as you. But believe me not. And yet, I lie not. I confess nothing, nor I deny nothing. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry for my cousin. By my sword, Beatrice, thou lovest me. Do not swear and eat your words. I will swear by it that you love me, and I'll make him eat it that says, I love not you. Why then, God forgive me. What offense, sweet Beatrice. You, you have stayed me in a happy hour, I was about to protest I loved you. And do it with all thy heart. I love you with so much of my heart that none is left to protest. Come, bid me do anything for you. Kill Claudio. <laughs> Not for the wide world. You kill me to deny it. Farewell. Terry, sweet Beatrice. I am gone, though I am here. There is no love in you. Nay, I pray you, let me go. Beatrice. In faith, I will go. We'll be friends first. You dare easier be friends with me than fight with mine enemy? It is Claudio thine enemy. Oh, is he not approved in the height of villain that hath slandered, scorned, dishonored my kinswoman? Oh, that I were a man. What, bear her in hand until they come to take hands? And then, with public accusation, uncovered slander, unmitigated rancor. Oh, that I were a man, I would eat his heart in the marketplace. Terry Beatrice, Talk with a man out a window, a proper saying. Me, but oh, sweet hero, she is wrong, she is slandered, she is undone. Beatrice. Oh, that I were a man for his sake. <laughs> oh, or that I had any friend would be a man for my sake. But manhood is melted into courtesies, valor into compliment, and men are only turned to tongue. He is now as valiant as Hercules that only tells a lie and swears it. I cannot be a man with wishing. Therefore, I will die a woman with grieving. By this hand, Beatrice, I love thee. Uh, use it for my love some other way than swearing by it. Dost thou really think in thy heart that Count Claudio hath wronged Hero? Yea, as sure as I have a thought or a soul. Please. Enough. I am engaged. 
I will challenge him. I will kiss your hand, and so I leave you. By this hand, Claudio shall render me a dear account. As you hear of me, so think of me. Go, comfort your cousin. I must say she is dead, and so farewell. malefactors. Mary, that am I and my partner. Aye, that's certain we have the exhibition to examine. Nay, which are the offenders that are to be examined? Let them come before Madam Constable. Mm. Yea, Mary, let them come before me. What is your name, friend? Baraccio. Pray, write down Baraccio. And you're the Thera? I am a gentleman, madam, and my Ooh. name is Conrad. Gentleman. <laughs> Write down, master gentleman, <gasps> Conrad. Mm. Master. Master, do you serve God? Yea, madam. We should hope. Uh, Write down, mm -hmm. they hope they serve God. <laughs> and write God first. Amen. Mm -hmm. For God defend, mm. but God should go after such villains. Yes. Master. I say to you, it is proved already that you are little better than false knaves. Mm -hmm. How answer you for yourself? Mary, we say that we are none. Oh. <laughs> a marvelous witty fellow, I assure you. <laughs> but I will go about with him. <clears throat> Come you hither, sir, a word in your ear. Master, I say to you, it is thought that you are false knaves. <laughs> Madam Constable, I say to you that we are none. Oh. Mm. Well. <clears throat> Stand aside. Afore God, they are both agreed in their tale. Mm -hmm. Have you written down they are no knaves? Madam Constable, you go not the way to examine. You must first call forth the watch that are the accusers. <coughs> Yea, Mary, let the watch come forth. Masters, we charge you in the prince's name. Accuse these men. This man said, Madam, that Don John, the prince's brother, mm -hmm. is a villain. Villain. <gasps> Write down Prince John a villain. Why, this is flat perjury to call the prince's brother villain. Madam Constable. Pray thee, fellow peace. I do not like thy look, I promise thee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what heard you him say else? Mary, they here received a thousand ducats of Don John for accusing the lady hero wrongfully. <gasps> flat burglary as ever was committed. What else, fellow? And that Count Claudio did mean by his words to disgrace her before the whole assembly and not marry her. <gasps> oh, villain, thou wilt be condemned into everlasting redemption for this. Redemption. <laughs> what else? This is all. <laughs> and this is more masters than you can deny. 
Prince John is this morning secretly stolen away. Oh, no. He was in this manner accused, in this very manner refused, oh, no. and upon grief of this, suddenly died. Oh, no. Madam Constable, <laughs> let these men be bound and brought to Leonato's. I will go before and show him the examination. Come, let them be a Let them be in the house! Off, talk home. By my life, where is Sexton? Let her write down the prince's officer a coxcomb. Come, bind them, thou naughty varlet. Away, you are a fool! You are a fool! Uh-uh. Dost thou not suspect my place? Dost thou not? Suspect my years? Oh, that the sexton were here to write me down a fool. But, master, remember that I am a fool. You're a fool. <laughs> Though it be not written down, yet forget not that I am a fool. A fool. No, thou villain, <laughs> thou art full of piety, as shall be proved upon by good witness. I am a wise fellow. Mm -hmm. And which is more, an officer. <laughs> and which is more, a householder. And which is more, <coughs> as pretty a piece of flesh <laughs> as any as in Messina. Amen. And one that knows the, the law. <laughs> Come, bring them away. Oh, that I had been writ down a fool. You're a fool. <laughs> If you go on thus, you'll kill yourself. It is not wisdom thus to second grief against yourself. I pray thee, cease thy <gasps> counsel. What falls into mine ears is profitless as water into a sieve. Bring me a father who so loved his child, whose joy of her is overwhelmed like mine, and bid him speak of patience. But there is no such father, therefore give me no counsel. Therein do men from children nothing differ. I pray thee peace, <laughs> for there was never yet philosopher that could endure the toothache patiently. Yet bend not all the harm upon yourself. Make those that do offend you suffer too. Ere thou speakest reason, nay, I will do so. My soul doth tell me hero is belied. And that shall Claudio know, and the prince, and all of them that thus dishonor her. Oh, here come the prince and Claudio hastily. Good day, good day. Good day to both hear, of you. Hear you, my lords. We have some haste, Leonato. Some haste, my lord. Well, fare you well, my lord. Are you so hasty now? Well, all is one. Nay, do not quarrel with us, dear old man. If he should choose to quarrel, it were best that some men choose to lie low. Who wrongs him? Mary, thou dost wrong me, thou dissembler, thou. Nay, never lay thy hand upon thy sword in front of me. I fear thee not. Mary, beshrew my age, if it my should give age. your dear age such cause of fear. In faith, my hand meant nothing to my sword. Tush, tush, man, never fleer and jest at me. I speak not like a dotard nor a fool. Know this, Claudio, to thy head. What I would do if I were not old, Know this, thou hast killed mine innocent hero. No, no. Thy slander hath gone through and through her heart, and in doing so I am forced to lay my reverence by, and with bruise of many days and gray hairs, do challenge you to a trial of a man. I say, thou hast belied mine innocent child. Thy slander hath gone through and through her heart, and she lies buried with her ancestors, where never scandal slept, save this of hers, 
framed by thy villainy. My villainy? Thine, Claudio, thine, I say. You speak not right, old man. Tell my lord, Leonardo, I'll prove it on his Leonardo, body if he dare. Leonardo. Despite his youth no. and active practice. Away! I will not have to do with you. Canst thou so daft me? If thou killest me, boy, thou shalt kill a man. He shall kill two of us, but that's no matter. Let him kill one first. Win me and wear me. Let him answer me. Come, boys. Come, sir boy. Come. Come, sir boy. I'll whip you to the face. Nay, oh. as a gentlewoman, I will. Sister. Ugh, I hold you content. I know them. And <laughs> these men, I know them what they weigh even to the utmost scruple. These scrambling, outfacing, fashion monging boys that lie in depraved and slander. Come, do not you meddle. Let me deal in this. <laughs> Gentlefolk both. We will not wake your patience. My heart is sorry for your daughter's death. But on my honor, she was charged with nothing that was not true and very full of proof. My lord, my lord, I will not hear you. No. Come, sister, away. I shall be heard. And so shall or some will smart for it. See, here comes the man we went to seek. Now, senor, what news? Good day, my lord. Good day, senor. You are almost come to part of fray. We had like to have had our two noses plucked off by two old folks without teeth. <laughs> Leonardo and his sister. What thinkest thou? Had we fought, I should doubt we'd have been too young for them. In a false quarrel, there is no true valor. I came to seek you both. We had been up and down seeking thee, for we are high-proof melancholy, and would fain have it beaten away. Wilt thou use thy wit? <laughs> Is in my scabbard. Shall I draw it? As I am an honest man, he looks pale. Are you sick or angry? Come, thou shalt help us thrust, Carraway. Sir, I shall not. I pray you choose another subject. But by this light, he changes more and more. I think he'd be angry indeed. Shall I put a word in your ear? What, come you to usher a challenge? You are a villain, I just not. I will make it good with how you dare, when you dare, and what you dare. Do me right, or I'll protest your cowardice. You have killed a sweet lady, and her death shall fall heavy on you. Let me hear from you. Well, I will challenge you so that I might have good cheer. Fare you well, boy. You know my mind. I will leave you now to your gossip-like humor. You break jests as braggarts do their blades, which, God be thanked, hurt not. My lord, for your many courtesies, I thank you. I must discontinue your company. Your brother, the Don John, is fled from Messina. What? You have among you killed a sweet and innocent lady. No, For my lord Lackbeard there, he and I shall meet. Until then, peace be with him. He, he is in earnest. In most profound earnest. But, but soft, did he not say my brother was fled? My lord, he did. Come you, I sir. Don't... You be a cursing hypocrite, and as such you must be looked to. How now? Two of my brother's companions bound. What's going on? Officer, what offense have these done? <clears throat> Mary, sir, they have committed false report. Moreover, they have spoken untruth. Secondarily, they are slanderers. Sixth and lastly, Please. they Wait. have belied a lady. Thirdly, they have verified unjust things, and to conclude, they are lying knaves. knaves. <laughs> Who have you offended, sirs, that you are thus bound to your answer? This learned constable is too cunning to be understood. What is your offense? Sweet prince, let me go no further to mine answer. I have deceived even your very eyes which your wisdoms could not discover, these shallow fools have brought to light, who in the night overheard me confessing to this man how your brother Don John incensed me to slander the Lady Hero. What? 
how you were brought into the orchard and saw me court Margaret no. in hero's garments. Margaret, no. How you shamed her when you should marry her. No. My villainy they have upon record, which I had rather seal with my death than repeat over to my shame. The lady is dead no. upon mine and my no. master's false accusations. And briefly, I desire nothing but the reward of a villain. Runs not the speech like iron through your blood? I have drunk poison while he uttered it. But, but, but did my brother set you on this? Nay, no. and hath paid me richly for the practice of it. He is composed and framed in treachery, and flat he is upon this villainy. Sweet hero, now thy image doth appear as the rare semblance that I loved at first. <gasps> Come, bring away the plaintiff. By this time, our sexton hath reformed Signor Leonato of the matters. And masters, do not forget to specify, when time and place shall serve, that I am a fool. She's a fool. <laughs> Here, here comes Master Signor Leonato. Leonato. And the sextant, too. Which is the villain? Let me see his eyes, that when I note another man like him, I may avoid him. Which of these is he? If you would know your wronger, look on me. Art thou the villain that with thy slanderous breath hast killed mine innocent child? Yea, <laughs> even I alone. Not so, villain, thou beliest thyself. Here stand a pair of honorable men, a third is fled that had a hand in it. I thank you, princess, for my daughter's death. Record it in your high and worthy deeds. Twas bravely done, if you bethink you of it. I know not how to pray for your patience, yet I must speak. Choose your revenge yourself. Impose what penance your invention can lay upon my sin. Yet sinned I not in but mistaking by my soul, nor I. And yet, to satisfy this good old man, I, I would bend under any heavy weight that he'd enjoin me to. I cannot bid you bid my daughter live. That were impossible. But possess the people here in Messina, hear how innocent Hero died. And if your love can labor aught in sad invention, write her in epitaph and hang it upon her tomb, and sing it to her bones. Sing it to her tonight. Tomorrow morning come you to my house, and since you could not be my son-in-law, be yet my nephew. Huh? My sister here hath a daughter, almost the copy of my child that's dead. Give her the right that you should have given her cousin, and so dies my revenge. Oh, sir, your kindness doth wring tears from me. I do embrace your offer and dispose henceforth of poor Claudio. Tomorrow then I shall expect your coming. Tonight I take my leave. <clears throat> this fellow shall be brought face to face with Margaret, whom I believe was packed in all this wrong. No, by my soul she was not, nor knew not what she did when she spoke with me, but always hath been just and virtuous. Moreover, sir, which indeed is not under white and black, this plaintiff here, the offender did call me a fool. Mm -hmm. I beseech you, let it be remembered in his punishment. Mm -hmm. There, I discharge thee of thy prisoner, and I thank thee. God keep your worship, I with your worship well. God restore you to health. I humbly give you leave to depart, and if a merry meeting may be with, God prohibit it. Come! Until tomorrow morning, lords, farewell. Farewell, my lords. We look for you tomorrow. We, we will not fail you. Tonight, I'll mourn with Hero. Until tomorrow morning, lords. Bring you these fellows on, and we'll talk with Margaret and how her acquaintance grew with this lewd fellow. Sweet 
Beatrice, wouldst thou come when I call thee? Yea, senor, and depart when you bid me. Oh, stay but till then. Then tis spoken. Fare you well now. And yet, ere I go, let me go with what I came, which is with knowing what hath passed between you and Claudio. Only foul words, and thereupon I will kiss thee. Uh, foul words is but foul wind, and foul wind is but foul breath, and foul breath is noisome. <laughs> Therefore, I will depart unkissed. <laughs> Thou hast frighted the right word out of his sense, so forcible is thy wit. But I'll tell thee plainly, Claudio undergoes my challenge, and either I should hear from him shortly, or I'll subscribe him a coward. And now I pray thee, tell me for which of my bad qualities did thou first fall in love with me? For them all together, <laughs> which maintained so politic a state of evil that they would not allow any good part to intermingle with them. <laughs> but for which of my good parts did you first suffer love for me? <laughs> suffer love, a good epithet, for I do Suffer, love, indeed, for I love thee against my will. <laughs> in spite of your heart, I think. Oh, alas, poor heart, if you spite it for my sake, I will spite it for yours, for I will never love that which my friend hates. You and I are too wise to woo peaceably. Now tell me, how doth your cousin? Oh, very ill. And how do you? Very ill, too. Serve God, love me, and men. And there will I leave you too. Here one comes in haste. Madam, you must come to your uncle, for it is proved that my lady Hero hath been falsely accused, <sighs> and the prince and Claudio mightily abused, and Don John is the author of all, who is fled and gone. Will you come presently? <laughs> will you go hear this news, senor? I will live in thy heart, die in thy love, and be buried in thine eyes. And moreover, I will go with thee to thy uncle. <laughs> Did I not tell you she was innocent? So are the prince and Claudio, who accused her on the era that which you heard de debated. But Margaret was at some fault for this, although against her will, as it appears in the true course of the question. Well, I'm <laughs> glad that all things sort so well. And so am I, being else by faith and forced to call young Claudio to a reckoning for it. Well, sister, <sighs> daughter, gentlewoman all, withdraw you into the arches, and when I send for you, please come hither masked. The prince and Claudio promised to me this hour to visit me. You know your office, sister. You must be mother to your brother's daughter. Which I will do with confirmed countenance. Thank you. Friar, I, I must entreat your pains, I think. To do what, senor? To bind me. <laughs> or undo me, one of them. Oh, Leonardo, truth, it is good, senor, that your niece doth regard me with an eye of favor. <laughs> that I, I think she had for my daughter, tis most true. <laughs> <laughs> and I do with an eye of love requite her. That I, I think you had from me and the prince and Claudio. <laughs> but what's your will? For my will, my will is that your good will may stand with ours <laughs> to be joined this day in a state of honorable marriage. <laughs> in which, friar, I desire your help. My heart is with your liking. And my help. Here comes the Prince and Claudio. Good day to this, this fair assembly. Good morrow, Prince, and good morrow, Claudio. Are you yet determined this day to marry my sister's daughter? I am, my lord. Bring them hither, sister. Here's the friar ready. Come, come. Which is the lady I must seize upon? <laughs> This same is she, and I do give you her. Why, then she is mine. Sweet, let me see your face. Know that you shall not until you swear in front of the friar to marry her. <laughs> give me your hand. Before this holy friar, I am your husband, if you like of me. And when I lived, I was your other wife. And when you loved, 
You were my other husband. Another hero! <laughs> Nothing certainer. One hero died defiled, but I do live. And surely as I live, I am a maid. The, the former hero! The hero that was dead! She died, my lord, but whilst her slender lived. All this amazement can I qualify. After the holy rites are ended, I'll tell you largely of fair hero's death. Meantime, let wonder seem familiar, and to the chapel, let us presently. Yes! <laughs> uh, soft and fair, friar, which is Beatrice? I answer to that name. What is your will? Do not you love me? Why, no, uh, no more than reason. Oh. Why, then the uncle and prince and Claudio have been deceived, for they swore you did. Do not you love me? Troth, no! Oh, no, surely you do. No more than reason. Oh. Well, then my cousin Margaret and Ursula were much deceived, for they swore you did. They swore you were almost sick for me. They swore you were well nigh dead for me. <laughs> Tis no such matter. Then you do not love me. <laughs> no, truly, uh, but in friendly recompense. Oh! <laughs> Come, cousin, I'm sure you love the gentleman. <laughs> and I'll be sworn upon it that he loves her. For here is a letter written what? in his own hand, halting sonnet of his own pure brain, fashioned to Beatrice. <laughs> and here's another written in my cousin's hand, stolen from her own pocket and containing her affection unto Benedict. A miracle. Here's her own hands written against our hearts. <laughs> Come, I will have thee, but by this light, I take thee for pity. <laughs> <laughs> I would not deny you, but by this good day, I yield upon great persuasion, and partly to save your life, for I was told you were in a consumption. <laughs> <laughs> Peace. I will stop your mouth. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> uh, how, how now, Benedict? The married man, <laughs> Prince. <laughs> a college of witchcrackers cannot Flout me out of my humor. No. In brief, since I do purpose to marry, I will think nothing that the world can devise to say against it. For man is a giddy thing. And this is my conclusion. Aww. For thy part, Claudio, I did think to have beaten thee. But thou art like to be my kinsman, live unbruised, and love my cousin. I had hoped thou wouldst have denied Beatrice and spared the dear lady much sorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Look well to thy husband, cuz. <laughs> Come, friends, let's have a dance ere we are married! Yes! Yes! <laughs> that we may lighten our hearts and our wives' heels. <laughs> Prince, thou art sad. Get thee a wife! Oh, get thee a wife! <laughs> <laughs> Listen to thy so expert a friend in the art of Love. Oh. <laughs> My lord, your brother Don John is taken in flight and brought with armed men back to Messina. Oh. Think not on him till tomorrow. I'll devise thee brave punishments for him. Till then, musicians play! Yes! Yes!